Thank you, Madam Chair, and it's uh, Fat Tuesday, so I'm passing around uh, Adula chocolates from Apple Valley there. Nice. So. And, and just before we do that, I'd like to move House File 614 to be laid over. And House, so, go ahead and present your bill. Madam Chair, Madam House Madam File 614. You are a co-ed in a nice college dorm. You decide to take a run in the morning. It's such a nice day out. You're running along a wooded path. You're pulled into the woods violently. You're attacked. You're beaten. The person that did this to you runs away. You climb to the path. Someone sees you on the road, calls an ambulance. The ambulance comes. You're in a blur. You don't know really what happened or what's going on. You're taken to an emergency room. The emergency room basically says, we have to do an exam on you. You were attacked. You really don't know what's going on. You just know that your life is about to change. That is one of the many runs I've been on as a <coughs> medic. And many of my colleagues have been on the same run and documented the same course. And a victim of sexual assault, especially at a college, is lost. They don't really know what to do. They don't know who to trust, where to go. And it's an extremely sad and really frustrating situation for all the caregivers because we're in a process that we're used to. This is the space we live in as caregivers. When I found this bill, when someone gave me this bill, I thought this is really something that we need to go forward with. Today I have somebody here from Legal Aid, Mrs. Webster, and she's going to talk about what goes into this bill. Mrs. Webster? Welcome to the committee, Ms. Webster. Webster. Thank you, Madam Chair, members. My name is Jessica Webster. I'm a staff attorney with Legal Aid, and this is uh, an idea that came from uh, one of our Legal Aid offices uh, up nor in northern Minnesota, where we tend to we tend to see um, victims of sexual assault, campus sexual assault, later in their process. We usually get referrals from police departments, and the types of services that we can help with, uh, helping with housing leases, helping with uh, healthcare access, helping with harassment restraining orders. They're the types of things that sometimes if we could help a victim sooner, we could have more of an impact. So this was something that our legal aid offices said, you know, if these referrals came sooner from campuses, we think we could, uh, you know, help in six, seven, eight, nine months sooner sometimes. And so it seemed like it made a lot of sense to have this type of notice provided. It wouldn't just be legal aid. It could be other volunteer, volunteer lawyers, pro bono lawyers, other legal services that would help victims. So I am a I appreciate that representative Hewitt is bringing the bill, and uh, we appreciate the support. And again, this is a recommend. This is a requirement that they would have to put this into policy, and have a um, a program to offer this to victims. Okay. Do we have any questions from our members? The candy's working. Is yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> Very good candy, and it's in your from your district, correct? It's from. Robert Bierman's district, but that's besides the point. Right, we'll see about well. redistricting. <laughs> Thank you. We appreciate it. Anyone in the audience that would like to testify testify on House File 614? Okay. Would you like to make any final comments, Representative Hewitt? Members, these are this is the space we live in, and these victims, both boys and girls, because I've went on both those calls. We need to make sure that we're protecting them and making sure they're getting the information they need. Please consider this for your uh, omnibus. I'll renew my motion that House File 614 be laid over for possible inclusion in the Higher Education Omnibus Bill. The bill is laid over. Thank you very much. Thank you.